Sudden cardiac arrest kills around about 30,000 people a year in the UK alone. Sudden cardiac arrest is when your heart stops. In separate videos, we talk about heart attacks. This is the pain in the chest when someone is still conscious or at least they have still got a heartbeat. When someone's heart stops, in most cases, around about 85% of the time, it goes in what's called VF, ventricular fibrillation. You might have heard this on programs on television where someone said they've gone into VF. What this is is an abnormal twitching of the heart. The heart is quivering, but it's not actually pumping any blood. The person is effectively dead. If you leave this person, they will not die, they will stay dead. So what we're trying to do within CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, is to massage the heart by pushing down on the chest, which would force the blood out of the uh, heart. It would go through the lungs and it would hopefully then be sucked back into the heart. So we push down on the chest and the blood is forced out. When we let go, the blood is sucked back in. Because we're doing breaths, we're then also circulating more oxygen into the system, which can then pump around the body. CPR will not bring them back to life. This just can't happen. But what we do need, we need to activate the emergency services very quickly, and they will bring what's called an AED, an automatic external defibrillator and drugs, and hopefully they can revive the person. The problem from the paramedics point of view is if effective CPR is not done, or any CPR is not done, their chance of survival uh, is very, very small. In only around about a third of sudden cardiac arrests, does anyone even attempt CPR? So what we're looking at is if you can just try and do CPR, this person's chance of survival will be increased. Their chance of survival is dropping by around about 10% every single minute before the ambulance arrives. With an ambulance call out of around about eight minutes, the chance of survival is quite low. So this is a skill which has no guarantees, but it's a risk that's worth taking. It's something worth doing. Because if you can do CPR, the chances are this person could, um, with the paramedics' help, come back to life. How are you? Are you all right? In this scenario, someone has gone into sudden cardiac arrest. So they're being found outside so when you approach somebody, again, introduce yourself. It may be you know them, in which case use their name. So as you approach them, continually talk to them, continually look for dangers. If there's anything that's gonna be dangerous, then remove that before you approach the person. The whole time you're dealing with the person, remember, you're looking out for any other possible dangers that come across. So you approach them, you can may tap on the uh, collarbone, shout for help. It may be another neighbor could come and help you. So tap on that collarbone, and then we need to find out if they're breathing or not. Hand on the forehead, the other one on the chin, tilt the head back, and we're listening for breathing for up to 10 seconds. So just count out loud. One, two, three, four. He's not breathing, Chris. Go and get the ambulance quickly and tell them we've got a man who's not breathing. I'm going to do CPR while you're gone. Let right, me know. Okay. Now at this point, if you find someone who's not breathing and you're on your own, you must leave the patient and make the call yourself. If there is somebody out there, then send them to call the emergency services. Tell them, can you go and dial 999, ask for an ambulance. Tell them we've got a non-breathing patient and we are doing CPR. Tell them exactly where we are and come back and tell me what they say. Because you want the person who's gone off the emergency services to come back and tell you how long they'll be. So in this example, we've sent for help. So the next thing we do is chest compressions. So take the heel of your hand and interlock your hands together. So we're pushing down on this part of the hand. So interlock your fingers. Do that as best you can. You should be quite straight, easy to do. And then what we're doing with that is pushing down on the center of the chest. If you look where the breastbone is, we're just putting the hand right in the middle and we're pushing down. And we're pushing down at a rate of two compressions per second, which roughly is around about 100 to 120 beats per minute. It is quite fast, and we're pushing down with the equal pressure and then allowing the chest to fully rise up. Because when we do the press down, we want to force blood out and we let go, we want to suck blood back in. 
We do 30 compressions and we're pushing down five to six centimeters. Once we've done those 30 compressions, we need to put the hand on the forehead, under the chin, squeeze the nose, and we open the airway. Once we've opened the airway, we're delivering two breaths of around about one second. Once we've done those, move back onto the chest compressions. We're not wasting too much time between doing the compressions and the breaths. So here we're going 30 compressions, two breaths, 32, 32. You would carry that on until the emergency services arrive, until maybe the person did show some signs of recovery and obviously you would then stop. If you're too exhausted or if you can hand over to somebody else, even if they're not trained, you can still hand over to a second rescuer because you can quickly and easily tell them what to do.